This boy held someone's desk hostage in order to force them to apologize, but using a hostage as blackmail is too much. Hello everyone, I'm here to bring you a healing Taiwanese drama that's like a movie in every frame make our days count. The story begins with Adam's grades, slipping from a perfect score last semester to a 13 this semester, and being named by his teacher. I did not realize that not only did he not reflect on himself, but he deliberately provoked the teacher and skipped class. At lunch break, a few friends eat the fried chicken that Adam bought when he skipped class, and not only want to rub it in for free, but also flirt with him for a while. Just then, Adam suddenly receives a text message and immediately collects himself and leaves in a hurry. It turns out that Adam left in a hurry to meet his girlfriend Amy. Amy sees him covered in bruises and can help but chastise but painfully medicate him. I didn't realize that a man and a woman could almost have an indescribable thing happen. The two of them are in a state of shock when Gabra, a classmate, walks in unintentionally and interrupts them. Gabra's groundlessness contrasts with Adam's kinder. And for those who don't know, Gabra has done something bad. The next day, the school announces the results of the midterm exams, and Gabra, who has been in first place for several consecutive years, once again attracts the attention of all the girls in the school, including Adam's girlfriend, Amy. Gabra is high, strong, and dedicated to her studies, while Amy previously faced the uneducated Adam all day long. Now, Gabra, who is the opposite of Adam, manages to tickle her fancy. To this end, she uses her studies as an excuse while devising a tense encounter plus fall routine designed to get Gabra's attention. However, straight Gabra has long since ignored the mundane and not only ruthlessly rejected her, but even a hug was a hassle. But photos of the two getting close are still seen by Adam. However, at this point, Adam doesn't take it seriously and doesn't feel threatened by it. In the face of the righteous indignation of his friends, he acted somewhat surprisingly. After dinner, he goes to the infirmary for his usual lunch break and runs into Gabra, who is also taking a lunch break. Am, who didn't have any bad intentions, was instantly intrigued by the sight of Gabra. He takes the pen out of Gabra's hand and prepares to help him draw the perfect face, but accidentally falls on Gabra's side, waking him up. The camera pans, and Gabra's cold rejection not only doesn't deter Amy, it makes her more and more frustrated. Not only does she have no qualms about belittling Adam and praising Gabra in front of her friends, but she also approaches him openly between classes. She even borrowed Gabra's jacket on the pretext of being cold and took photos to show off to her friends. Adam doesn't know that Amy is doing this, but it's all seen by Adam's friends, leading everyone to think that Gabra is deliberately gunning for Adam's woman. As Amy and Gabra get closer and closer, the friends can't stand it any longer and decide to help Gabra be the good guy. However, Gabra is very confused when confronted by Sam's questioning. Not only does he not admit to seducing Amy, but he also doesn't know what it means to give his jacket to a girl. It's just that Gabra has too much integrity, and in a situation where the enemy is strong and we are weak, he doesn't know how to protect himself at all, but rather, he tackles the situation head-on. The end result can only be a lose-lose situation. Gabra was written up by her teacher for an injury that caused her to be late to class, but in order to be able to successfully get the scholarship, he had no choice but to tell his teacher the truth about being bullied by Adam's friends. As a result, Adam and his friends are punished by the teacher and have been at odds ever since. Gabra's beating directly angers Amy. Amy blames Adam without asking why, although in the end, she knew that the incident had nothing to do with Adam. Instead of apologizing, she started with Adam's attitude problem and graciously admitted that she had a crush on Gabra. Now, Gabra's conflict with Adam's friends escalates directly into a conflict with Adam himself. It's because of Amy that the two men, who have never met before, have had a lot of misunderstandings. The next day, Adam sends a direct message of war to Gabra, asking him to meet him in front of the school after school and warning his friends to stay out of the way. However, Gabra doesn't pay any attention to Adam's words. And after school, he goes straight out the back door to the soy milk store where he works part-time. On the other hand, James has been fascinated by Boat ever since he met him while working part-time at a gym. Not only did he sneak a peek at the other guy while he was working out, but he also snuck up on Bo and found out where he worked. Unexpectedly, just as he reaches the door, he sees Bo helping Gabra with her collar. The intimacy between the two stains James' heart straight away. Now Gabra has another enemy, in the face of his lover being rot. James is clearly not as good-tempered as Adam. He straight-up corners Gabra and presses him about his relationship with Bo. Gabra continues to keep her mouth shut, unable to resist or explain and it's only thanks to her teacher's timely appearance that she's able to avoid a nasty fight. Of course, Am, who had a bad date with Gabra, didn't take it lying down. Adam doesn't wait for Gabra and takes his desk hostage in order to force Gabra to apologize to him. However, Gabra re-emphasizes his innocence. Adam doesn't believe him and decides to teach him a lesson. At the critical moment, 
The school security guards appeared in time to stop them. Gabriel's presence threatens not only Adam, but James as well. On this day, James intends to confess his love to Bo, but he never dares to open his mouth finally. He makes a move, but because his behavior is too rude, he is directly treated as a pervert by Bo. Afterwards, James regrets and decides to apologize to Bo. However, the love of his life is right in front of him, but James doesn't even have the courage to approach and say hello, so he can only ask Adam for help. Meanwhile, Adam learns that the person James likes is a boy. However, even when James has the courage to approach Bo, he doesn't get his attention and instead complains that he's making a big deal out of nothing and scaring his customers. And just like that, James' love was over before it began. On that dark night, Adam has found himself increasingly curious about Gabriel ever since he briefly crossed paths with her. And, while Gabriel was studying hard, he chose to wait quietly. Don't ever think that the two have turned enemies into friends. In reality, Adam is premeditating a bigger prank in order to know the exact address of Gabriel's house. When Gabriel comes home from a late night of studying at school, she still reads by lamplight. Because the test is tomorrow, he must work a million times harder to get the life that others have within their reach. The next day, Gabriel was almost late because she reviewed to late yesterday. Just as he is about to leave the house, he realizes that the door has been locked from the outside in order to get back at Gabriel. After a struggle, Gabriel finally rushes out, and he ends up missing the exam anyway. Gabriel goes to great lengths to plead with her teacher on her knees so that she won't have to make up a test, but the teacher is only an enforcer and cannot change the situation. Looking aside from the man who started it all, Gabriel was so angry that he punched Adam hard. It turns out that Gabriel's parents died young, and for years he's been relying on school scholarships and part time jobs to make ends meet. The first time I saw this, I was in the middle of a long journey, and I was so happy to see you. If mom and dad were still alive, he would have lived at least as long as he did, and he would have had a hard time sleeping and eating. But even as condescending as he is, he decides to apologize to Gabra after realizing his mistake. The next morning, Adam came downstairs to Gabra's house, but for some reason, he was too afraid to face Gabra and sneaked up behind her, just as Gabra is about to be hit by a motorcycle that comes out of nowhere. Adam steps up and pulls him back. Gabriel is puzzled by the sudden appearance of Adam, who says he was just passing by. It's just that this kind of twisted reasoning, not to mention that Gabriel doesn't believe it. Even Adam himself thinks it's false. Gabriel, who missed out on a scholarship, can't make ends meet on her current part-time salary at a soy milk store. So he asked Bo to introduce him to part-time jobs that paid better. To help Gabriel, Bo finds his old friend Alan. Alan agrees to Bo's request, but with the condition that he have dinner with him. But coincidentally, just as Bo is waiting for Alan, he sees James frolicking with a young girl. James, who was already on a rocky road, has seen his prospects diminish even further since then. Alan helps Gabriel find a better paying part-time job, as promised, and Bo keeps his word to have dinner with him. Although the plot so far does not indicate what kind of relationship the two have, everyone can see that they have an unusual relationship. Also seeing this is James. On this day, James is still waiting for Bo in front of the soy milk store, but he sees Alan coming to him. The two had a love it of a hug as soon as they met and left together in a car afterwards. Seeing the love rival appeared, James instantly anxious red eyes, regardless of their own conditions of difference, mounted a bicycle to chase up. However, two wheels are never as good as four, and Alan soon leaves James far behind. Seeing that things are already halfway to failure, James decides to take one last gamble. Just in case he wins, James picks up his cell phone, gives it a whirl, and angrily tells Bo to get out of the car. He thought Bo would ignore it. But Bo obeyed James and got out of Alan's car obediently. But James doesn't see any of that. He just sees Bo getting into someone else's man's car. So at this point he was very anxious. James is worried that he's rushing things and scaring Bo. And the two of them end up not even being friends. And Adam, as a fellow traveler, would have been best suited to comfort James at this point. But Gabriel comes along and straight away he leaves his friends behind. Adam follows Gabriel to the infirmary. And finally decides to work up the courage to apologize to Gabriel. But seeing Gabriel asleep, he couldn't bear to disturb him. Just as he was about to approach, Gabriel suddenly woke up and looked at him with a wary look on her face. In this situation, Adam is directly timid. Afterwards, he still looked preoccupied, and I'm sure Gabriel is distraught at Adam's sudden change of heart. However, not wanting to get too involved with Adam, he takes it upon himself to find Sam, a friend and family member, after school and asks him to tell Adam how he can let himself go. Sam relayed Gabriel's words truthfully to Adam. Friends think Adam is still getting back at each other, but they don't realize that Adam is only doing this because he feels guilty and is looking for a chance to apologize to Gabra. But Adam's unorthodox behavior is not only misunderstood by Gabra, 
but even his friends think he's changed a bit when they find out. In order to resolve the misunderstanding between the two sides, the friends unanimously decided that Adam personally come out to explain clearly to Gabra. Even if we cannot be friends, but try not to be more than one enemy. The next day, while standing in line for yogurt with James, Adam confides in James about his appearance anxiety. It turns out that as Adam gets to know Gabra better, he finds himself unconsciously noticing him, caring about him, and getting close to him, much like a couple in love would. As soon as James, who has been there before, heard it, he knew that Adam had a crush on Gabra. To be sure of his true feelings for Gabra, Adam decides to find a way to verify them again. The exams are finally over and Amy decides to go to a spa with Adam and gets to friends to cover for her. Just as Amy is about to leave, Brady realizes that Gabra has walked into a gay bar. Out of curiosity, she took the picture. After verification, Adam realizes that he really likes Gabra. However, James was in a lost mood and didn't bother to return to him. The story is about a man who has a crush on a woman who has a crush on him. Seeing his secret out in the open like this, James is so angry that he just yells at Adam. This time, he is considered to have lost his face completely. James doesn't have a success story, but Naija understands what it's like to be gay better than he does. So Adam looks up to James as a love mentor to guide him and Gabra through their relationship. The priority now is to take away Gabra's defenses against Adam. At the same time, James also persuades Adam that he must be sincere about love. At the same time, the courage to go forward and recklessness is indispensable. In order to impress the other person and make him like you, Adam decides to start with the love bento first. However, Gabra has long since blacklisted him for trust. Gabra can detect nothing but intrigue in Adam's sudden caring thoughtfulness. So, Gabra rejected him unceremoniously. On the other hand, James learns from his brother that Bo was injured while working out and is so distressed that he decides to visit in person and talk about their life events. James came to Bo's soy milk shop and confirmed that the other party was not seriously injured and put his heart at ease. Since the last time that they had a lip lock, Bo had gone after James, which made him very uneasy inside. James originally wanted to apologize to Bo, but he didn't care and advised him not to take it to heart either. Bo's indifferent attitude angers James, who decides to show him the door once and for all. In the 473 days, he's been crushing on Bo. Every day feels like a year to James. As time passes, James becomes more certain that Bo is his true love. However, Bo rejects James on the grounds that he is too young and there is too much uncertainty about his future. And just like that, James' first confession ends in failure. On the other hand, Adam sees Gabriel's gesture of indifference and decides to go head to head. Through this time, Adam not only knows if Gabriel has eaten, but even how many grains of rice Gabriel has eaten. At this point, Gabriel is like prey to Adam. If Adam didn't mean to get back at him, odds are he's really sick, and Adam did it to watch Gabriel eat the midnight snack he prepared. At the end of the day, he still cares about Gibra. He just expresses it a little differently. Of course, Adam isn't satisfied with just having dinner with Gibra. He wants to give her a ride home. While he did do the same, it was the conclusion that he didn't like spending time with himself, as evidenced by the fact that Gibra came home today, three minutes shorter than usual. But Adam wasn't devastated, as he watched Gibra go upstairs and turn the lights on and off. I thought Gibra had rested, but to my surprise, Gibra turned around and went somewhere else. Adam follows Gibra to a bar. When he goes inside, he realizes that the bar is full of gay patrons, and he sees Alan helping Gabra with her clothes. The scene not only stung Adam's eyes, but also his heart. He swung his feast indiscriminately at Alan and beat him up. And just like that, Gabra's $200 business was lost in one punch by Adam. Gabra thinks Adam is getting back at him again and cries and apologizes to him on her knees, just hoping Adam will leave her alone. Until now. Adam didn't realize that Gabriel's missed exams and missed scholarships meant that he would have to work elsewhere to earn tuition or drop out of school. The image of Gabriel kneeling down and apologizing to him, as Adam completely reeling and starting to self-reflect. Is it true that you are a self-righteous person? As James said, after his sister's enlightenment, Adam recovers and decides to treat Gabriel a little more seriously. And a little more seriously, the next day, Adam took the initiative to ask Amy out and proposed to break up. Despite Amy's repeated stays, it still doesn't change Adam's decision. Afterwards, Adam and James, a pair of brothers in distress, talk to each other about their pain. Adam can't bear to see James suffer and decides to help him out. Adam comes into Bo's door and tells James all about his feelings for him, straight up. However, instead of being moved by Adam's words, Bo blames him for affecting the store's business. In a few moments, James arrived. Bo decided to talk to James. It turns out that Bo has been hurt by love, and he has dated three boyfriends who all ended without a fight which makes him more cautious about relationships, and James is too young, with too much uncertainty about the future, 
to take the plunge. Bo thought James would give up because of his words, but instead he rose to the occasion and impressed Bo. Bo is touched by James' deep love and decides to give it a try with him. And while Adam didn't do James any favors, he did his best. He sends Gabra, who works at the store, home. As the two are about to part ways, Adam finally relents and says he wants to go to Gabra's house to whisper to him. Adam finally finds the courage to apologize to Gabra and the misunderstanding between the two is cleared up. And Adam, after much confirmation, has decided that Gabra, who doesn't like boys, just likes to ring Gabra. On the other hand, Amy tells Brady and Amos about her breakup. The two think Adam is a bad man. Amos, who has been quietly liking Amy behind her back, decides to find a chance to get back at Adam and avenge Amy's death. The next day, Gabra arrives at school early and sees breakfast sitting on her desk and instantly recognizes that it's Adam's doing. He thought about how Adam had been acting all this time and fell into a deep thought. After class, Adam comes to meet Gabra for lunch. In order not to burden him, Adam deliberately lowers his stance to please him, and Gabra is slowly coming to terms with Adam's closeness. Between classes, Adam fools around with James and hopes he can't ask Bo about Gabra's preferences so he can't get to know Gabra better. As it turns out, James has long had Gabra in his sights as a competitor and ruthlessly rejects Adam's request. James comes to Bo's aid despite his refusal and reveals that Adam is courting Gabra. Bo, informed of the situation, decides to meet Adam. However, right after the meeting, Bo advises Adam to stop pestering Gabra. He tells Adam about Gabra's life and situation. Adam is from a good family and does what he wants, while Gabra can only get better if she studies hard. Seeing how Bo sees himself, Adam gets angry and leaves. The next day, Adam approaches Amy's best friend, Brady, to trade Gabra's picture with her. Brady thought Adam was still getting back at Gabra, so he advised him to give it up, but Adam boldly admitted that he was in love with Gabra. I just don't know if Adam's bold love is a blessing or a curse for Gabra. After school, Gabra stays alone in the classroom to study, as she always does. The difference is that he didn't see Adam today. At this point, Gabra's mind was a little annoyed, but he didn't realize that he cared about Adam. After study hall, Gabra finally meets Adam. Gabra takes it upon herself to tell jokes to cheer Adam up when she sees him in a bad mood. Seeing the change in Gabra, Adam ignores Bo's words for the moment. As long as he and Gabra are in love, nothing else matters. On the other hand, Adam's meeting with Bo goes badly. The one who is hurt the most is James, who thinks Bo is refusing to help Adam because he likes Gabra. The last thing he learns is that Bo's favorite person is himself, and he's completely happy. And Gabra's days are so much more interesting and people are so much happier since she has Adam by her side. But the happiness didn't last long, but Adam had an accident. Between classes, James apologizes to Adam on Bo's behalf and advises Adam not to just fall in love and interface with Gabra's studies. Adam agrees without hesitation, only to be interrupted by Sam, who suddenly runs in. On this day, Gabra is in the middle of a class when she is called into the office by the school's guidance counselor. It turns out that Gabra's part-time job at a gay bar was reported. Of course, in addition to the Gabra thing involved, there's also the photo that Adam reported. At this point, Adam suddenly appeared. He voluntarily admitted that he had deliberately reported Gabra in order to get back at Gabra, and that the photos were synthesized by himself. Plus, with Adam's handwriting on the back of the photo, the school decided that the incident was intentional on Adam's part, spared Gabra, and simply invited Adam's parents. Adam's parents arrive at the school and apologize to the teacher for Adam's naughtiness, but no matter how much his parents scolded Adam, he always claimed that he did everything by himself, and that there was only one result of his doing so, and that was to be expelled from school. The incident caused a big stir in the school, but Amy doesn't believe it was Adam who did it. She double-checks with Brady to make sure the photo is only of her and Adam, but it didn't occur to Brady that Amos suddenly remembered that Amos had that picture. Though, Amos finally admits that he synthesized the photo that was recorded to the school. Not only that, but even the signature on the photo is his imitation of Adam's own. And Amos goes to great lengths to get back at Adam all because he likes Amy. Amy tells Adam the first thing she learns. Adam doesn't care what the truth is. He has one goal in mind, and that is to protect Gabra. Even he graciously admits he likes Gabra. For Amy was wrongly paid after all. On the way home, Adam's heart is racing. But the moment he sees Gabra, he's back to his normal self. Gabra is invited to the house by Adam and orders her sister not to eavesdrop outside the door. Gabra is envious of Adam's beautiful room and Kelsey's sibling bond. And Adam takes advantage of being on his own turf by not only confessing his love, but also pouncing right on Gabra. Adam hardens himself from numerous photos to prove Gabra has a crush on him. Gabra admits that he started following Adam a long time ago, but Gabra is more envious of Adam, who can't do what he loves without fear or burden, and himself is just opposite of him. Gabra grew up with two dead parents and lived with her aunt. Later, 
when her aunt gets married and has children, Gabra worries that she will be a burden to her aunt and moves out to live alone. Adam sympathizes with Gabra and decides to take care of him for the rest of his life. The misunderstanding between Adam and Gabra has been completely cleared up by this point in the story. The next day, Adam brings Gabra a loving breakfast and agrees to make time to go to Adam's house to help him with his homework. Finally, the weekend came and Adam volunteered to take care of the hygiene of the house. Adam's erratic behavior leads his parents to believe that a girl will be visiting the house, but instead it's Gabra, the school bully. Adam's mom and dad are very surprised that their son has a friend who is a school bully and are happy about it. At this point, the sister sees that something is going on between the two, but Adam's mom is convinced that Gabra is a boy and nothing will happen with Adam. Even though Adam asked Gabra to tutor him just to make his dad happy, Gabra still hoped that he could take it seriously, and Gabra sees Adam's family's warmth and harmony and envies him even more, something he couldn't have gotten with any amount of effort. After tutoring, Adam waits for Gabra to get off work in front of the bar, and is thoughtful enough to present her with a small, well-prepared gift. The two were talking and laughing on the street like a couple. On the other hand, Bo accompanies James from work as promised, not expecting to be targeted by James just after taking a shower instantly transforming into a fierce beast. Let's just imagine the exact picture. James has just completed his love ascension with Bo when his brother Jerry comes to his door. Bo thought Jerry was here to persuade him to break up with James, but to his surprise, the person just came to check on the situation and said he would not interface with the two's relationship. Instead, he even sent a small gift. The new year is approaching and James takes advantage of his vacation to accompany Bo to prepare for the new year. However, Bo only prepared gifts for the elders and siblings of James' family and bought nothing for himself. It turns out that Bo was in a relationship with his senior in college, and after his family found out, he broke off contact with them. He's been out on his own all these years and has long since lost sight of everything. It's just that he can't help but feel a little lost when he sees other people's families having a good time. Fortunately, James promised him that he would be back with him right after New Year's, which made Bo's mood a little better. On the other hand, the school's punishment for Adam is not yet over, and he remains grounded at home, and Gabriel doesn't have a cell phone, and the two are temporarily disconnected. For a better tomorrow, Adam decides to ask his sister to help him give Gabriel a gift. Gabriel got her gift and was torn between opening it or not. In the end, curiosity got the better of him and he opened it, finding lots of snacks as well as a cell phone. Gabriel's heart felt a hint of warmth for the first time in a long time. Gabriel finally calls Adam back, only at this point he's in a mixed mood and doesn't speak and Adam blames himself for making Gabra suffer. Hearing Adam's words, Gabra feels like she's finally not alone. Adam remains at home, but suddenly becomes a good boy and fills his parents with alarm. Gabra's sudden arrival at his door surprises and surprises him, but this time Gabra isn't here to see him. She's here to see Adam's mom and dad. Adam's parents give Gabra the cold shoulder, and Adam's dad even tries to kick him out, but Adam's mom stops him in time. The odds of Adam's parents agreeing to an official relationship are slim to none. Come the two overcome their parents' obstacles and live happily ever after. But despite this, Gabriel is still on the future of the two, full of expectations and confidence, and even took the initiative to find Adam's parents, proposed that he can't help Adam successfully enter the university, but even then, he still can't convince Adam's mom and dad to accept him. Although Adam's mom says she needs time to think about it, it's clear to both Adam and Gabriel that there is very little hope. Although his parents haven't officially given Adam and Gabriel the go-ahead to date, it doesn't affect the two's relationship at all. Adam takes Gabra out for a ride to Adam's secret base, where Gabra comes forward and tells Adam about her parents. Adam is heartbroken about what happened to Gabra and decides to study physics with Gabra to study the stars, but finds it too difficult and worries that he won't be able to get in. But for Gabra's sake, he decides to give it a try. Adam is finally ungrounded and back in school, with no small amount of credit going to Gabra to show his appreciation. Adam's dad decides to invite Gabra over for dinner. The relationship was on the verge of being east and victory was in sight. But in the end, it was Adam's impulsiveness that undid it. Adam saw that no one was home, so he couldn't restrain himself and was ready to indulge. But I did not expect, just when the two love to the thick, was early back to Adam's parents saw the scene in front of them, which makes the traditional thinking of the parents were greatly stimulated. Not only do they change their attitude towards Gabra, but even Adam's dad wants to break off his father-son relationship with Adam. There was a glimmer of hope, but now there is no hope at all. Adam is grounded at home by his parents again, and he asks his friends to look after Gabra at school. The appearance of his sister is a cathartic release of his emotions. Adam is afraid that it will affect Gabra's schoolwork, and even more so that he will withdraw and stop liking himself. These words were overheard by a passing mom. Adam's mom is heartbroken to see her son sad and decides to talk to Adam's dad about reconsidering Adam's relationship with Gabra. On the other hand, Gabra, 
After returning home, looked at the cell phone Adam had delivered and fell into deep thought. He didn't know what kind of mood he should be in to face Adam now, but he eventually picked up the phone. After a long silence, Gabriel finally spoke, calling Adam's name in a loud voice. Adam's response reinforces the pair's determination to keep going. Gabra is still working at Bo's soy milk store, and her cell phone rings frequently, catching Bo's attention. Kai Kong is surprised to find out that Gabra has bought a cell phone, and Gabra explains that the phone is a gift from Adam. Bo is happy to see that Adam and Gabra's relationship is stable, but when he learns that Adam is grounded again, he invites Gabra to spend New Year's Eve with him. Kong brings Gabra to a bar to spend the holidays with Alan, and the lively atmosphere makes him forget the loneliness of the world for a while. At this time, he felt an unprecedented warmth, but also light up the road ahead. After the dinner, Bo leaves with Gabra. Bo has always thought of Gabra as his brother and has prepared a New Year's wrap packet especially for him. After the two separated, Bo went to the river alone, intending to call his dad, but worried he would be angry, so he changed his mind temporarily. Bo wanders the streets alone, looking at the lights of the homes and becoming even lonelier inside. Suddenly, James appears from behind. James' appearance instantly fills the loneliness inside Bo. James not only presents Bo with a couple's ring, but also promises to bring Bo home someday so that his parents will accept this wonderful relationship. On the other hand, Adam's family is preparing for New Year's Eve dinner. Adam's parents see that Adam is so disinterested that they can't even impress him with money, so they decide to tell him about inviting Gabra over for dinner. Adam mistakes his parents' invitation for an invitation to make life difficult for Gabra again. The odds are that they will prevent the two from dating, despite the announcement of the discussion, so he wasn't looking forward to the meal, and was even a little worried about Gabra getting hurt again. The next day, Adam waits for Gabra at the door to give him a head start, in case mom and dad don't approve of the two dating. Adam is willing to skip college to stay with Gabra. Meeting again, Adam's dad is still angry, but is clearly restraining himself. Gabra, on the other hand, started smiling at Adam's dad from the moment they met totally looking like she was deliberately trying to impress her future in-laws. The conversation officially begins with Adam's mom dismissing Gabra's last offer to help Adam get into college. Adam is instantly anxious when he hears that his parents are still against the two dating. However, this is only a beginning, not a real result. Adam's mom is full of twists and turns. It's a real rush, and the real result is announced by Adam's dad. Adam's parents felt that the offer of just helping Adam go to college was too easy and decided to up the ante, but never got to the point. It turns out they were waiting for Gabra's resolve. In the end, both parties agreed to a relationship as long as Gabra couldn't get Adam into a top five national university in the province within a year. Hearing this, Adam didn't hesitate to say yes. The next day, Adam takes Gabra to meet with his friends and informs them that Gabra has met his parents and spelled out their terms. Although the two have yet to receive their parents' blessing for their romance, they are still being congratulated. Just about everyone is forced to watch the sweet interaction between the two before their meal is even eaten. Finally, the results of the first monthly exam are announced, and Adam is not only punished by Gabra for doing so poorly, he is also not allowed to eat, but Adam is still confident about getting into college, and just as Adam's mom thought, only Gabra can keep Adam in line. Adam, who was rewarded, turned his appetite into motivation, and not only completed the study program arranged by Gabra, but also voluntarily gave up his weekends off. Adam begins to put all his energy into his studies, even during recess, and his teachers are impressed and Gabra takes the time to help him with his tutoring. But it's so hard to restrain yourself when you're dealing with someone you like. The camera pans out, and Bo actually runs into his nephew in front of the bookstore. It's only been a few years since I've seen him, and Bo almost didn't recognize him. The nephew takes one look at the book in Bo's hand and realizes he bought it for his boyfriend. Though curious, he was smart enough not to ask again. Although Bo has been away from home for many years, his family has not forgotten him. It looks like Bo's homecoming should be just around the corner as well. The next day, Adam attends a school function with his friends, which results in public outreach over Adam and Gaber's intimate behavior. Everyone turns the watering event into a water festival by pointing the hose directly at the two men. This should be their last relaxation before the big exam. Just wonder how many more carefree days like now they have in the future. Today is Gaber's 18th birthday, and Adam hand delivered the cake. The two indulged in a short but beautiful time, and as long as two people's love does not waver, they will never be separated. Adam's parents have seen the changes in Adam's life, and even his relationship with his dad has improved a lot as the big exam approaches, and Gabriel usually needs to earn college tuition while on vacation, in addition to studying and helping Adam with tutoring. However, Adam suddenly falls ill due to the stress of study. Gabriel steps into Adam's house again. This time Gabriel is not only not scolded by Adam's parents, 
but also Adam's mother is in a hurry to go out and leave the sick Adam to Gabra to take care of. Adam is still running a fever, and I didn't think he'd have the strength to molest Gabra when he's already sick. Adam's impulsive behavior has left Gabra scrambling and fleeing. The next day, after Gabra's care, Adam's condition improves. Adam's mom credits Gabra for taking care of him. Until then, Adam didn't realize that what he did yesterday wasn't a dream. It was real. Adam wants to apologize for his actions, knowing that they must have bothered Gabra. Gabra sees Adam knocking on the door and instantly becomes very nervous, but finally lets him in. For Adam seen yesterday, Gabra acted more embarrassed and not repulsed, but Adam still decides that the best thing for the two of them will be after the big test. Adam's dad is so nervous he's shaking all over when it's time for the results to be announced. Luckily, Adam finally got into a top 5 central university. He rented Gabra at the guest doll odds. Adam's dad isn't happy about it, but he listens to Adam's mom's advice and lets their relationship run its course. Gabra may still be helping out at Bo's soy milk shop, but his heart has long since flown to Adam. He waited quietly so as not to add to Adam's stress. Luckily, Adam doesn't keep Gabra waiting too long. When he learns that Adam got what he wanted and enrolled in a top 5 national university and sees that their relationship is getting better and better. Bo decides to treat the two to a celebration. The camera pans to show Bo at the gym, where James is instructing a strange man in fitness. Bo can't help but be jealous, as he looks at the close demeanor between the two. But in front of Jerry, he acted as if nothing was wrong, pretending that he was just worried about James' grades. James finally senses, as an afterthought, that Bo is unhappy. But what nags him even more, is that the school he's enrolled in is too far away from Bo. For a long time to come, the two will have to be in a long-distance relationship. On the other hand, Ahau and Gabra have successfully completed when Adam's parents made the offer. Now the two can finally be together in the open. However, although Adam and Gabra both did well on their exams, they don't go to the same school. So they are also about to face a long-distance relationship when school starts. In order not to be separated, Adam decides to move in near Gabra's school, which increases his commute. But Adam is willing. The next day, Adam drags James along with him to work part-time as a flyer distributor. In order to save up for his relationship, the funds would be available immediately, as he had asked Gabra to go out on a trip with him, and an overnight kind of thing at that. James can't help but feel happy for Adam as the two have had such a hard journey. On this day, Adam comes to Gabra's house to give him supplies. At this point, Gabra looked stunning in the sunlight, and saw that Adam could barely contain himself. At the crucial moment, Gabra pushes Adam away. Gabra's rejection instantly calms Adam down, and begins to question Gabra's sincerity. The two men also had an argument over this. James took advantage of his vacation to help out at Bo's store. Bo learns that Adam and Gabra are about to go on a trip and decides to take James along. Four people arrived at the pre-booked hotel, which only had king-size rooms. Adam decides to sleep on the couch at night in light of the fact that he's having a falling out with Gabra. Adam's indifference overwhelms Gabra, who doesn't know how to express his feelings to Adam and how to accept his liking. Bo sees Gabra's confusion and advises him to trust his true inner feelings and take a brave new step. When Gabra got back, Adam was already waiting for him for dinner. Gabra decides to follow Bo's advice and let Adam know how she really feels inside. He hugs Adam and makes a bold statement and speaks his heart's true feelings. Adam also took this opportunity to apologize to Gabra, after which the two kissed. On the other hand, James and Bo are eating at the diner, but no Adam and Gabra show up when they wait and wait. James then can't resist their urge to call and warn them, but is deftly stopped by Bo. As someone who has been there, Bo knows all too well the reason why the two are in no hurry to eat. It's a true friend who doesn't bother at times like these. The next day, Adam and Gabriel lie quietly in bed, enjoying the hard-won goodness. At this point, Adam has only one wish, and that is to never be disturbed. After returning from his trip, Adam picks up Gabriel from work in his new car. Gabriel looks at Adam's car with envy. Adam then drives Gabriel through the city with him, as the two arrive at a residential building. Adam pretends to introduce a friend to Gabriel but actually rents out the house the two have long chosen to surprise him with. Everything in the room is very much to Gabra's liking, and the two of them are looking forward to the future together, full of good wishes for the future life. After returning home, Adam begins to pack his things for the move. Dad is worried that his living too far away from home is affecting his studies and decides to have a talk with him. Although he is angry with Adam, he hears that Adam is ready for a future with Gabra, so he says nothing more, but urges him to come home more often. Adam and Gabra finally make the move. On this day, the two men invite their friends to a dinner party. Everyone marvels at how Adam has changed. Not only is he gentle and considerate, but is also there for Gabra in every way. The friends see this, and are even more certain that Adam has found true love. James is envious of Adam and Gabra when he sees them bonding. When he goes back, he asks Bo to live with him, 
but he refuses on the grounds that it interferes with his studies. But in reality, it's a test of their relationship. He tells James that he will meet all sorts of people and things in his four years of college, but if he ends up choosing the person of his choice, then that relationship is worth staking the rest of his life on. Adam's mom, though helpless, sees that the two like each other and stops blocking them from being together, even agreeing to visit their new home. After the two get together, their cooking skills gradually improve after some time alone. However, no matter who is cooking, Adam always prepares Gabra's favorite carrots. One day, the two were preparing dinner. Gabra suddenly realized that she had forgotten to buy salt and rushed out, forgetting even her wallet. Adam sees that Gabra has forgotten his wallet and calls to remind him. Gabra rushes back when he gets the call. However, Adam can no longer wait for him. Without Gabra around, Adam puts all his time and energy into his studies. A few years went by and he not only graduated from the physics department with first-class honors, but next, he was ready to go to the top school of physics in the United States for further study. Before leaving, Adam says goodbye to his friends. Since graduation, friends see each other less and less often. I don't know if I'm happy or sad to see that everyone has their own lives. It's late and Adam's mom and dad are still waiting for Adam to eat. Today Adam's relationship with his dad is much more relaxed. Adam came back to his room to put his bag away and to pack a few books to take with him. When he saw a green box, he stopped everything. Just as he was about to open it, his mom came in and told him to eat. No one is more heartbroken to see Adam in his current state than his mom. She understands Adam's sadness and what he's been up to on a daily basis all these years. It's just that after all these years, she's worried that Adam has been dwelling on the past and missing out on more of the good things in life. She tells Adam that it's time to lift his head up, look around at the people he loves, and live again. The camera pans as Bo's nephew arrives at the store and pulls out a bag and hands it to him. It turns out that over the years, James has continued to send gifts to Bo's dad on his birthday, but every time they've been returned, even this time, Bo is angry at James for taking matters into his own hands, but actually feels sorry for him because he's been wronged. It's just that all these years of perseverance continue to keep him from even going through the door. The next day, Adam asks his donkey friend to meet him. The boy looks just like Gabra, except that their personalities are very different. Since Gabra left, Adam has made it his goal to climb to the top of the highest mountain and study the stars. But the person in front of him is not Gabra. And after a brief chat with the donkey, Adam leaves with his sister, the to run into Amy at the clothing store. Amy marvels at how Adam has changed. Not only is he mature and stable, but he is also very knowledgeable. The two were having dinner together, when they suddenly and accidentally mentioned Gabra. Adam was calm on the surface, but inside he had already been thinking a lot. It turns out that Gabra didn't go back on the day. He went out to buy salt, and he had an accident. The aunt who took care of him, since he was a child, kept a low profile and helped with his funeral. And no one knows when or where Gabra's farewell ceremony was. If we had seen Adam, we probably wouldn't have remembered that there was once a boy named Gabra. Adam ran home like a madman after separating from Amy. Finally, he opens the box, which contains everything about Gabra and is the only thing Adam has today that is related to Gabra. Looking at them, Adam's memories feel like they've opened a floodgate, and he can't contain them any longer. He remembered the first time they met, the first time they had an argument, and it all seemed like it happened yesterday. Even after all this time, Adam still can't get over it, and he cries like a child who's been robbed of his candy. At this point, Adam ignores the rain, and goes to a secret base that only Gabra knows about. But James finds him in time and brings him back home. Adam has changed. But Gabra is still stuck at 18. In order not to let the distance between the two grow, he kept heading for the hills where he could get closer to the stars, as if he could reach out and touch them, as well as Gabra, but nothing he did seemed to change anything, and the change in himself was both frightening and terrifying. Ten years later, Adam still dreams of that intersection, where Gabra lay quietly on the ground, never to rise again. Today, the only thing Adam can do is to always remember Gabra and take him with him. As much as it pains him to live like this, Adam would rather be miserable all the time than have to forget him. Gabra has always lived in Adam's heart, and no matter what becomes of him in the future, that will never change. Adam's dad is getting better and better at cooking, and I don't know if it's because of heartache or guilt, but now he's accommodating to Adam more than his sister. While his sister goes to get Adam some sober soup, Adam's parents talk about Adam's current girlfriend. Dad advises Adam that if the two of them feel good about each other, they can settle down. Adam didn't answer and excused himself. The camera pans as Bo returns from his morning jog and sees his nephew waiting at the door. Bo is surprised by his nephew's sudden rebellion. After the meeting, the nephew suddenly apologizes to James and Bo. James and Bo are at a loss and when asked why, the nephew says he misunderstood. It turns out that the gift returned by Bo's dad is not as simple as it seems. But something else is going on. 
In fact, Bo's dad was hoping that the two would go back to see him together with a gift. Bo frowned straight away when he heard this. Bo didn't think he'd have the chance to go home again in his lifetime. And James' dedication paid off in the end. But even if it doesn't work out, he's willing to try for Bo's sake. Remember many years ago, James said that one day he would take Bo home with him. And now he has. Adam's visa has come through and he's coming to say his final goodbyes to James. As for when to come back, even Adam himself is not quite sure. James asks if Adam would still like Gabra if he met him now. Adam didn't answer directly, just said he would take a trip to the Himalayas after. He left the country to get closer to the stars and also to see Gabra. The end of the play. Life gives us everything we want, but then makes us lose the meaning of life. I believe that after all this, we will reach a new level of calm and open life. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you for your support and attention. We will see you in the next issue.